I want you to help me preach today. I want you to look at someone and say, neighbor, I need you to know something about me. We might have just met, but I have layers. You may be seated. Look at a few people and tell them I've got layers. Thank you. Thank you. Clap your hands for Brother Quan. He was playing today under the anointing. Thank you. because Precious was standing in front of him. Secret love. No, I'm just playing. Praise the Lord. I've got layers. Um, there is a uh, show. I don't want to do Bishop Long anymore. I'm through. Um, but um, there is a thank you. Uh, there is a show that some of you watch, all of you might not watch it, but um, uh, Lee Daniels um, has a sitcom out um, by the name of um, Empire. And um, it is in season four um, that the popular character Lucius Lyon, um, played by Terrence Howard, something happened at the ending of season three uh, where his life was attempted to be taken by someone who didn't like him, which has been yet to find out who that was. But as a result of this accident, um, he lost one of his legs and he also lost his memory. So in season four, majority of season four is Lucius not remembering anything about who he was. Now, mind you, before Lucius lost his memory, Lucius, of course, is the head of the empire, but uh, the way he goes about leading this empire, um, there's blood on his hand, to say the least, because uh, he will make sure that whoever crosses him is dealt with. So now that he is Lucius, uh, he has this counselor named Claudia, um, which is rightfully named Claudia. <laughs> And uh, she doesn't call him Lucius because he doesn't remember the character Lucius. His name, birth name, is Dwight. And every time she talks to him, she calls him Dwight. His family still associates him with Lucius. And she said, and they say, who is Dwight? He said, well, he doesn't remember Lucius. And of course, Cookie was like, well, he's going to remember. So they, this, this, this whole uh, dichotomy and the whole season of them trying to make him remember something that he cannot remember. But every once in a while, he would have these flashbacks Pretending, pretend, uh, uh, peradventure, he was in a certain situation and something would spark his memory. And when it would spark his memory, he would have a flashback of this hideous, um, evil, uh, manipulative type of character. And he would say, I remember this, but when I remember it, uh, was I a bad person? And they try to constantly cover, uh, cover who he was. And they say, he said, in order for me to become who I'm supposed to be, you can't cover who I was. You have to tell me who I was because in order for me to fix it, you're going to have to tell me who I was because I don't remember it. Every time he does remember it, he, he keeps going back to it and he, it, it causes him to be paralyzed because of uh, paralyzing his, his moment. He'll be like, oh man, I didn't, I remember that. Or he'll come in contact with someone and he'll remember them from the past and the way, whether there was a gunshot involved or whether there's a killing involved or whatever and he remembers them and he'll say, that person is an evil person. He says, was I an evil person? And they'll always kind of overshadow who he was and not tell him the truth. Finally, he says to Claudia one day, he says, hey, he said, I'm remembering things about myself that I don't like and I don't want to be that person. And she responds to him and she says to him, just because you don't know him doesn't mean you have to be him. You're remembering parts of yourself that are flashing back, but just because you're having those flashbacks doesn't mean you have to be that person anymore. You have the ability to be a new person if you want to be. And I want to make this, this argument today as I'm talking about layers is that some of you, when it comes to removing masks in your life, some of you to remove the mask means that you have to deal with things that you so rightfully try to cover up and you covered it up for so long and now the word is dealing with you in a way that you don't necessarily like and it's causing you to have to deal with your, your mask and your facade that everybody's always seen but you have never dealt with before and you always want to cover 
cover it up when somebody like Claudia is coming in your life and saying in order for you to be your best self you're going to have to deal with your past at some point last week I was dealing with a message about demons and demonic and dealing with the man and we shouted and praise God and all that different type of stuff and when you start talking about those types of things it makes people uncomfortable and I've been asking the Lord all week long why does those type of things make people uncomfortable why do we not talk about those things what is difficult the difficulty in those type of things and the difficulty in those things is that for you to be healed and for you to be whole is that you're going to have to deal with every Every area of your life whether you like it or not you cannot shout everything out you cannot run everything out I don't care how melodious your voice is you can't sing away the hurt you can't sing away the pain some things you are gonna have to deal with and some layers you're gonna have to peel off even when it hurts and I have come today to be your best friend to show you how to deal with your layers I am the best friend you have in this moment because I will not allow you to keep running from things that God wants to change. I will not allow you to continue to walk out the door of your life and walk out the seasons of your life every time God tries to deal with an area in your heart that you've been comfortable with. An area in your mind that you've been comfortable with and sometimes we have to deal with the layers. Look at someone and say, deal with it. And that is very hard for people to do because we live in what Peter Scazzario calls, we live in an iceberg mentality. What an iceberg mentality is, is that when you know what shrunk the Titanic is not what was seen. What struck the Titanic is based on what was not seen. The captain of the ship had measured the level of the iceberg that he saw and he felt like they could withstand that particular level because of what he had measured in his mind. But what he had not measured is what was underneath the iceberg, what was underneath the water. And there are some of you that the reason that I find out and we find out certain things are, 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 are what do you call them when, when you're walking around like a, a mind, like a minefield. And there are some of you that you have to tiptoe around you because there are certain areas of your life that if you hit certain spots a bomb goes off and we're sitting here saying well what's going on why are you tripping like that why are you running away like that why are you backing up like that why don't you want to have relationships with people why don't you want to serve why don't you want to pray anymore why don't you want to worship anymore why you keep running around what's going on with you because according to what I've measured I measure what I can see but there's a whole lot of generational things that are under knee that have been suppressed that nobody deals with nobody talks about because they keep dealing with your iceberg church self and it's been frozen for so long that nobody has unthawed your real issues nobody has ever unthawed your nasty attitude your nasty self or your running self or your unsubmissive self or your 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 backbiting self or your gossiping self or your lack of giving self your stubborn self. Have I got to your street yet? Whatever it is, there are some areas that you've got to unthaw and it's got, you've been so used to being cold that the heat of God is coming to unthaw the areas that you don't deal with. It is uncomfortable when things beneath the surface have to be dealt with because we choose to forget what we don't want to deal with. So certain trigger points, certain scriptures, certain words remind you of what you tried to thaw, of what you tried to keep frozen. And when the word, the Bible says that God is a consuming fire. What that means is when God comes into your life, he is a consuming fire. That means that the Bible says, I would prefer that you either be hot or cold. But some of you have been lukewarm for so long that you don't know whether to be completely in God or completely out of God. You keep wavering between two opinions. But the Bible says, choose you this day what you're really going to do. Are you going to deal with it or are you going to play with it? But you can't be in between. This is not a seesaw. This is not a game. You've got to deal with it before 2018. January will not change you. 
hop from church to church, jump from job to job, jump from relationship to relationship. But until you deal with the layers, your layers are going to follow you everywhere you go. Blame the preacher, blame the church, blame the boo, blame the job, blame the Messiah, Messiah, Lord, I didn't mean Messiah, blame the master, whoever it is, don't blame the Messiah, but some people do. Blame Jesus for making you the way you are. If he had not made me this way, I would not be struggling with what I'm struggling with. Peter was a cusser. Moses was a murderer. David had all types of women. And the woman he was with still wasn't his wife either. He had all types of things, but God still called him the apple of his eye, meaning that God was able to look past his issue and see that his heart still was beating for God. Your issue does not disqualify you from being with God if your heart is still beating towards God. Don't you ever let anybody in your life or out of your life ever keep you captive to what you're struggling with. God can use the cussing. God can use the murderer. God can use the past for his glory if you live a life that is submitted and surrendered to him. Don't y'all dare look at me like I'm speaking in an unknown tongue. I am trying to make sure that you get delivered from people's opinions. What does God say about you? What does God say about you? Not your resume. Not your resume. But some of us are stuck in the area of wanting God to do what you've got to do. Some things, like that man last week when I talked about the man who had the demon. God, Jesus, when Jesus came to him, he said, what's your name? He had a choice whether he acknowledged the truth or whether he lied about it. And there are some of you who layer is all over you. And everybody sees the layers, but you just call it a filter. What we have done, as far as the church concerned, and as iceberg mentality, is that we are nicer people. We attend church more. We clean up our lives somewhat from alcohol, drugs, foul language. We begin to pray, share Christ with others. Uh, we say we've been a Christian for 25 years, six years, or whatever, but in reality, many of us are one-year-old Christians 16 times. You, you say you've been in Christ for 30 years and 40 years and five years, but really, you are having a one-time experience 16 times because you've never changed. You keep talking about what he did do, but you've done nothing with what he did do. He saved me, he redeemed me, but redeemed me to do what? He delivered me, yes, but are you still delivered? You've been changed, but changed to do what? And a lot of us, that's what we do. We always talk about, I've been in the church 22 years, rightfully so, you have. And that's all you've been in, is the church. In a building having experiences. The scripture says this, I don't know why I'm all over the word today, but the scripture says this, you have a form of godliness, but you don't have no power. You know church, you know attendance, you know small groups, you know leading, you know serving, you know how to be a chameleon. I learned how to blend in with those who are deep, learn how to blend in those who are not, learn how to blend in with all different types of things because I am a chameleon who never actually deals with my layer. And that was a wonderful thing with well, the interesting thing about how Ray Charles got his start. Ray Charles was good at mimicking other people. He got his start by being a good mimicker of other people. Finally, he met this woman and she said to him, she, he said, don't you like this song? She said, yeah, but it kind of sounds like somebody else. He said, well, that's what's got me to where I am. He, she said, but yeah, but it seems like God made you the way he did so that you could find who you are. And finally, when he found who, who, who he was, it did stir up some stuff because of a little gospel mixed with a little blues. And she said, that's sacrilegious. And she said, sacrilegious. And he said, he said, but it's who I am. He's like, well... I got a woman. Yeah, then well, she she just couldn't take it. And she was like, she said, Well, wait a minute, what are you talking about? He said, But I'm singing about you. <laughs> and I'm saying to some of you, you need to get a little sway when people try to tell you they don't like who you are. They'll be like, But this is how God made me. 
You don't have to like it, but somebody's going to come into my life who appreciates all I got. Appreciates my blindness, appreciates my limps, appreciates my brokenness, appreciates my tattoo, appreciates my gap, appreciates my fatness, appreciates all of me because I got a woman. Get somebody in your life who appreciates the real you and not the layered you. And if you do have somebody in your life who likes your layers, get somebody who doesn't settle for your layers, but helps you to peel off your layers. Because there are a lot of people who will come in your life to help you stay in struggle. I don't want anybody. Let us see saying it last night. She said, what can you add to me? I need to be, if you all come in my life, I got one question. What are you adding to my life? Because I've had enough people subtract. But in this season, I want to know, am I better for knowing you? Will you look at somebody and say, are you adding to me? (laughs) So, so Paul, Paul wrote this to answer a question because they were reforming the church and tried to uh, disqualify the church and um, they were dealing with things but they didn't want to call it sin. They didn't want to call it struggle. They wanted to call it anything but that because a lot of times when people don't want to deal with their stuff, they love to put it off on something else and somebody else to make themselves feel better. So Paul responded to this question. He said, no, 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 no. Sin is sin. And that's what it is. And that's what you're really struggling with. And I have to help you with that. And I want to help you deal with your letter. You deal with your layer. Someone say, help me. me. Say it again. Say, help me. me. I want to be Claudia for you today. I want to help you walk through the areas of your life that no one's talking about. So he opens up in this version. I thought the message translation was the best version of this. And I'm not going to go through all of it. But what's interesting, he says, he says, I'm going to answer to you. And and one scholar said that we don't know if Paul was writing this based on his after Christ experience after conversion or he was writing this based on what he was before conversion either way he says to him he said I know all of God's commands are spiritual he said but I'm not always spiritual he said stop putting me in a place that I'm not he said I'm writing this letter he said God's commands are spiritual but I am not always spiritual will you just holler that out real quick and say I'm not always spiritual say it again I'm not always spiritual and you need to say that often in all ways because people will try to put you in a place that they make you you holier than thou I am not spiritual always I am not always on last night when Kurt Franklin was talking about the church he he said a little biggie he put a little biggie in there a little Tupac in there he said the church people he said y'all don't know what to do with it he said because y'all listen to it outside of church but you don't want nobody to know it he said so when I put in the music y'all be like Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there's a lot of y'all who you don't know how to be real or how to live life. Jesus came. Come on, word. Jesus came that you might have life and life more abundantly. What y'all say the Bible says is Jesus came that I might have church and church all the time. The devil is a liar. Facebook, you hear me? Faith, where y'all at? Faith, you're the devil's a liar. That's what's wrong with people. You want to sit in church all the time and you don't know how to live. Jesus came that you might have life. Jesus wasn't walking around going Jesus turned water into wine. He knew how to turn up. Oh, I lost some of the the deep ones right there. I lost y'all. Y'all like, gee, what's he talking about? I'm not promoting it, but I'm saying Jesus didn't turn it into Kool-Aid. He turned it into wine. And he said, let the party begin. You want word for it, I give you. He said, be not drunk with excess. He said, don't be drunk with wine and have spirits, but have my spirit, but you don't need wine and spirits that you don't know how to control yourself. I know I'm preaching better than you're looking, but ain't nobody dealt with the real truth before and you don't know how to handle it. What did he say in a few good men? He said, we want the truth. You can't handle the truth. All right. 
He said, I'm spiritual. He said, I'm not always spiritual. I'm trying to help somebody. I really am. Mr. Leon, I hope I'm helping. I really am. He said, isn't this your experience? He said, yes, I'm full of myself. He said, I've been in sin's prison. He said, but what I don't understand about myself is I decide to do one thing, but every time I decide to do one thing, I always act a different way. I try, I try to get it out of my system, but every time I get out to get out of my system, I wind up being pulled back to the very thing. And that's, that's what Lucius' problem was. He said, I'm trying to be Dwight, but Lucius keeps cre creeping up all the time. And that's the issue. He says, I'm, I'm trying to be a new person, but I can't seem to forget who I was. <laughs> I'm trying to learn this new walk. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to be committed. I'm trying this new walk, but I can't seem to get this monkey off my back. I cannot seem to get totally free. I'm trying. I know that the Lord told me that I am beloved of his, and I know that he told me I'm a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, but I really have self-esteem issues that I can't seem to conquer, even though I know what the word says, but but what they told me and what they said about me speaks louder than what the word says. And it's hard, having a hard time trying to separate from who I'm supposed to be versus who I'm trying not to be. <laughs> and he goes on, this is helping anybody. He said, but I've learned that I need something more. He said, I know the law, but I can't keep it. Have you ever known how to do right? but you don't necessarily do what you know how to do. I know that I shouldn't be doing this and I know I should not be operating this way, but even though what I know I shouldn't do, I, I wind up doing it every single time. He goes on and says, he says, I do it so regularly that it's predictable. Have you ever had, and I, you know what? I know I'm preaching and teaching. And the reason I know it, because some of y'all are like, what <laughs> I know I am <laughs> because when you talk about surface stuff everybody's like yeah 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 but talk about real stuff <sighs> I chose the wrong Sunday to come have you ever and I don't know if y'all ever and I'm just exposing even myself I have been in seasons of my life where I said I wasn't going to but I knew me so well that it was so predictable but that I already knew and God knew my prayer what it was going to be after I did it because some of the stuff we trip on it ain't new it's the same stuff new season you get out of a relationship a few months later, get in another relationship, and they be like, I want to introduce you. You'd be like, don't he look like that? Oh, no, he don't look like But because our, our need is so predictable, we wind up thirsty for the same thing. So we wind up jumping out of relationship and, and things and churches to churches and businesses to businesses and friendships to friendships. And every time somebody tries to tell you about yourself, you run away and you go back to predictable. I know how to do right. He said, I know the law, but I have a hard time doing it. I, I know I delight in the law, but it's really obvious that he says, I delight in God's law. And I'm just trying to help you. And I'm through with this scripture at this. He said, I truly delight in God's command, but it's pretty obvious that not all of me is excited about it. Yeah. Are there parts of you that really don't want to change? Yeah. Some parts of you, it's like, I love the Lord. I, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And some of you are like, but I ain't letting go of that yet. <laughs> Come on. Because to let go of that means what happens with what I'm dependent on. What happens when that that I keep leaning on is not there anymore? Am I teaching anybody? What happens when what I've been leaning on is no longer a crutch for me anymore? And I've made this, I've made this point before. Someone in our small group said this, and I really appreciated her saying this. And when we had our very first week of our freedom course, she said, what makes me nervous about this freedom is that what happens when I get free from what I've been dependent on? What am I going to talk about anymore? I'm scared to get free from it because I've always had it. 
and there are some people that you're really scared to get free for real get in real relationships with people is because you've always been the way you are I can tell you know honestly as a pastor I've learned many things y'all have y'all have been the best book I've ever read <laughs> And I have learned, what I've learned, let me tell you what I've learned before we get into year three. What I have learned is that people love you until you challenge them. I will. People love you until you challenge them. People love you until you start pulling back layers. Because people are so used to being who they are that when you say, I know that's who you are, but God doesn't want you to stay that way. It's good, it's good to hear it, but it's not, it's good to hear it, but it's not good to actually deal with it. Because some things that God wants you to deal with actually hurt. When you look at someone and say, sometimes it does hurt. Sometimes it really does. Sometimes there are things that God delivered me from. Hear this. Maybe you've never heard this before. Maybe you've never said it. You wanted to say it, but never said it. There are some things that God delivered me from that I actually didn't want to be delivered from. That's why it's real quiet right now. People are like, can you say that? Yes. Because there are some things that God did not want in your life that you didn't necessarily want to be gone. But I learned that I wanted God more than I wanted that. And I had to make a decision at some point. God, I'd rather die, die missing it than die not having you. Oh, hallelujah. So I want to help you deal with these layers. So the first thing I want to help you uncover, and because in order, in order for you to deal with layers, you got to uncover some things. And the first thing you got to uncover is your mind games. Because all this sin stuff that's going on is mind games. It's the stuff that keeps creeping up in the night. It's stuff that when you're trying to focus, you can't focus because your mind keeps playing tricks on you. I know what Art Kelly said. I said, he said, your mind is telling you one thing, but your body's telling you another thing. And that's why he's on that list he's on right now. But I'm saying there's some of you... <laughs> That you got some mind games that are going on in your life. And that's what Paul, that's what Paul was saying. He said there are two natures at war with each other. He says there's two wars. There's two natures in me. There is the Jacob and there's the Israel in me. There is the old trickster in me, but then there's the royal priesthood in me too. There is a prayer warrior in me, but then there's the pervert in me too. I struggle between two. I'm struggling between preacher and pimp. I'm struggling and try to balance the two together. I'm struggling between missionary and missionary positions. I'm having a hard time between the two. Because I'm struggling between laying prostrate before God and then laying giving all myself away all the time. I'm struggling between the two people all the time. Show up to pray on Saturday, but I'm a private dancer Sunday night. I'm struggling. Struggling between two opinions and we don't talk about it because you look so anointed in here, but in God's presence you stink, you, you smell because you are bringing up strange fire. Strange fire. And you think nobody, nobody smells it. And flesh don't smell it. But heaven smells flesh. Heaven smells sin. Heaven smells wrong. You think you got your dance right, but you can't dance into heaven. Because heaven smells it. Heaven smells when flesh. That's why the Bible says no flesh can glory in his presence. And I'm, I'm struggling between two natures. Trying to do good, but the good I'm trying to do it just don't seem to always happen. I'm trying to do right, but the right I'm trying to do doesn't seem to happen. I'm trying to pray, but it seems like every time I try to pray, I always going back to doing what I'm supposed to. I go to sleep instead of praying. I'm trying to fast, but I eat instead of fasting. I'm trying to give, but I hold back instead of give. I'm trying to love people, but I hate people more than I love people. Trying to be in relationships with people, but I beat up people instead of trust people. I'm struggling. Two opinions. 
went to a new church and everything was fine until they started challenging me and I said, I don't like this no more. So I'm going to run away. And every time I run away, God keeps coming back to me and say, what's your name? And I say, my name is Layers because I don't deal with them. My name is Layers, so I, I just don't know how to deal with them. So I just, I just, I hide. And God says, Adam, 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 Deanna, Guillaume, Katie, hey Matt, Joanna, why you keep hiding from me? Brandy, why you, why you keep hiding? I want to bless you, but you don't ever show up to be blessed. I want to speak to you, but you never in a position for me to speak to you. Every time I go on the bed, somebody else is in there, and I came for you, not for them. <laughs> Don Treese, why you coming? I'm calling you. I'm trying to call you, but you keep going to everybody else instead of me. And I'm like, why? Why you keep playing games with your mind? Who keeps telling you you can't overcome? Who keeps telling you you can't be delivered? Who keeps telling you you can't be set free? Who keeps telling you you can't be all that I called you to be? Where are you? Where are you? Well, I was in sin, so I didn't think you wanted me, so I hid myself because I was ashamed. He said, I made you. I knew what you were going to struggle with. But I was here to help you through your struggles. But you allowed mind games to keep you away. Tricks are for kids. And the thing about games is this. This is how the devil, I wanna, I'm trying to expose the enemy's tactics in your life. The thing about games is this. People who play video games, the reason that they play video games is because they love the challenge of getting to the next level. So once they've conquered that level, then they go to the next level. I don't care if that's NBA sports. I don't care if that's a football game. I don't care if that's whatever games there are. I don't play games. But whatever it is, you always want to figure out how can I get to the next level. And then I can say I won that. Now I'm qualified to go to the next level. Because there are some things on certain games that certain levels are not unlocked until you conquer the previous levels. That's what the devil is doing with your mind. He'll tempt you with a small thing. And then once you fall for that, he'll go on to something greater. And once it gets on to certain greater, once you look on, there's something called, uh, um, I need two guys. Uh, can y'all go, Quan and Son? Yeah, come on. Y'all come up real quick because I need some strong people. Y'all just stand behind me, put my arms back. Once, once he comes in your life, you think you, this is the thing about Samson. Is because Samson was consecrated by God. He was consecrated as a Nazarene and was told, you should never cut your hair. You should not drink wine. There are certain things you shouldn't do. Well, he got caught up with this woman in his life. And she kept asking him, you got to hold tighter than that. Hold, hold tighter. Like, yeah, yeah, don't, don't hold me weak. Hold me strong because I'm stronger than you think I am. But anyhow, so... <laughs> So she kept asking him, where is your strength? He said, I, I can't tell you where my strength because God has consecrated me as a Nazarene since my birth. And I cannot tell you where that is. But she kept talking to his mind. And every time he laid down, she would speak to his mind. And you have to be careful who plays with your head. You have to be careful who's trying to get in your head. Am I talking right today? You have to be careful who's trying to get in your head. So, so finally, it says she kept trying to get in his head so much, it just says that he got to the point of being vexed. Now, what does the word vexed mean? Vexed means I am void of discernment. What does discernment mean? It means I'm at the point that I can't make right choices anymore because you all up in my head. You all up in my space. The things, the things I would do, I, would, I wouldn't do, but now you're all up in my mind and I know who I am. So it says that one day he got up and after they told him, after he told her all his secrets, it says that they shook, they shaved his head. Usually he could fight off who was ever trying to get him, but this time they shaved off his head and he tried to get up like every other time. 
But this time, when he shook himself, he couldn't break free because he had a stronghold on him. So he was trying to be who he used to be, trying to be anointed like he always was because he used to play church all the time and thought he could just shake himself like he normally does. But this time, the demons he was dealing with were stronger than they were before and he couldn't seem to, to break free, trying to, I mean, he's just trying to move forward. He looks strong, but he can't fight it off. And that's how some of y'all are in church all the time. You look good. Your weave is laid just right. Everything's good. But the reason you don't show up for three Sundays after this message is... <laughs> is because you're trying to break free of something that's trying to deliver you. And every time the word tries to deal with you, you be like, get off of me. <laughs> And God is saying something, your arms are too short to fight with me. So Jacob responded, he said, well, if we're going to fight, I ain't going to let go until you change me. If this is going to be a fight, I ain't going to let go until you change me. And the ending of Samson's life went like this. When they gouged out his eyes. I didn't plan to preach this. They gouged out his eyes. He had no vision anymore. But he still had a heart for God. Couldn't see how to make right decisions anymore. But he still had a heart for God. And he said, so they positioned him at the end of his life. And he said, put me beside two pillars. And he said, God, he said, Lord, if you give me my strength back one more time. If you give it back to me one more time, this time, I'll give you glory. This time, I'll honor you. This time, I'll give you the credit because I had all the credit before, but this time, it ain't about me. I just want to be free from this struggle. I just want to be free from this stronghold. So God, give me my strength one more time. And it says that he positioned himself. And all of a sudden, he said, in the power and the might of God, he said he pushed those pillars. And when he pushed the power, when he pushed the pillars, not in his power, but in the power of God, it broke off off of him he was still blind but he had his power back I want you to look at somebody and say I'm getting my power back look at somebody and say I'm getting my power back thank you so I'm getting my power back I might not see like I used to see but I'm getting these mind games out of me I'm trying to do what God wants me to do God give me one more chance God give me one more opportunity God give me one more chance to be delivered Somebody lift up your hand and say, God, give me one more chance. I just need one more chance. I, I played with you for a long time, but give me one more opportunity to be in your presence. He said, I'm tired of struggling with this stuff. And it says after that, the last thing, he says, I tried everything and nothing helps me. If no one can help me, I'm like, what happens? And I asked us one more thing that you got to uncover. And I said, Lord, why couldn't he? He had a mind issue, but God said, that's not the only issue he had. I said, what was the other issue? He said, he had a soul tie. I'm going to tell you what a soul tie is. A soul tie is a person or a season or a spirit that I walked away from but I ain't delivered from. So every time I see them or see it or see the season, it makes me feel a certain type of ways because I'm acting free but I ain't free because my soul is still tied to what I used to struggle with and you can't see the tie but they see the tie and that's why they can pull me back at will. <laughs> trying to break free from the pastors who messed me up, from the churches who messed me up, because they still got a tie on me. I'm trying to serve in a new location and serve in a new church, but this soul tie, this old season keeps pulling me back, and I'm trying to do good, but this old nature keeps pulling me back. Look at somebody say, uncover it, uncover it. This soul tie is beyond a sexual experience. 
is when I have allowed somebody in my space and I told you secret things and I shared with you hearts, parts of me that nobody else knew and you took those parts of me and used it to control me. So now I'm your Pinocchio and you're my Geppetto. So I'm trying to serve you, but every time you don't like something, you cut me off. Every time I try to do good, evil keeps pulling me back. It's that sin nature of that soul tie. That's why David said, so bless the Lord. He said, I command my soul. How do you handle your soul? I tell my soul where to go. I don't let my soul dictate to me. I talk to my soul. That's why David says, soul, be of good courage. I have to speak. What is your soul? My soul is my emotions. I've got to speak to the emotional part of me and say, line up with the word of God. So you will not fall for that anymore. So you will not struggle with that anymore. So line up with God's word. That's why every time Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he kept coming back, not with what he felt, but with the word said. Every time he said, you should eat this, he said, no, 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 the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. But if you don't know the word, you can't fight. If you don't know the word, you can't fight. If you don't know the word, you can't overcome. But when you spend time in the word, he cuts off the soul ties. Look at somebody and say, cut off that soul tie. I feel deliverance happening right now. Cut off the soul tie. You've been wondering if it's the church that's been messing you up. It ain't the church, it's your soul ties. You think it's the pastor, it ain't the pastor, it's your soul ties. It's the things that you stepped away from but you did not deal with. That's how you can fall so quickly. That's how you can get back in it so quick. That's why you can get angry so quickly because they still got an attachment to you. That's why they walk in the mall. You want to walk the other way because the soul is still tied to that. You got to learn how to deal with soul ties and cut it off. He said, I'm trying, I'm, tr I'm trying to deal with this stuff, but I can't figure out how to deal with it. I, he said in one version, he said, oh, wretched man am I. I'm so wretched. Who shall deliver me from this thing? Have you ever got to the point that you actually told the truth in your prayer and cried out and said, God, I'm tired. God, get this off of me. God, get this out of my spirit. I'm trying to show you how to pray instead of start saying, Lord, you know, Lord, you know, and I'm tired. Get this out of my life. Help me deal with this mask. Help me deal with this facade. He said, I don't know how to be delivered. But thanks be to God who sent Jesus. Who did for me what I couldn't do for myself. That's why we shout about the cross. Because it is the symbol that reminds me of where my soul got dealt with. It is a symbol. It's more than an emblem on a chain. It's a place that my life changed. That's why 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Even though my old tries to creep up, it has no hold on me anymore. Even though you try to remind me of that, it has no hold on me. When you look at someone real quick, and I want you to just grab their shoulder. And the person's shoulder that you grab, person the shoulder you got, the person that who's, whoever's hand is on your shoulder, person who's got your shoulder, do like this. Brush your hand off. Every time, my past, that's the only time you got permission to do that. Don't try that at home. I can't promise you that it's going to be safe like this. <laughs> But every time your struggle and your past tries to grip you, it cannot stay. And you've got to learn how to fight it off and say, even though you're trying me, and even though you're trying to take me back, you cannot stay here anymore. Somebody just shrug your shoulder. And you've got to learn how to fight the enemy for yourself. Jesus already did it once. He's not coming to do it again. The Bible says, greater work shall you do. You've got 
got the power to fight yourself. You've got the power. You're waiting on God to do what you got the ability to do. Shrug it off. Hallelujah. So I'm ending here. After, is this good to anybody? So after you uncover your mind games and your soul ties, come on, Quan, I'm through. You've got to get dressed because now you're naked. And you have to be careful being exposed. Because if you don't dress what you uncovered, then somebody's going to put something back on you that's stronger than what you got uncovered with. Excuse me. So you've got to be dressed with, one, the mind of Christ. Someone say, put your mind on. The mind of Christ. And you talk about, well, well you said mind games. No, God, he don't, play man, he don't play games with your mind. He says in Philippians, he says here, therefore, if there's any consolation, if there's any comfort of love, if there's any fellowship, if any affection of mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being a one accord of one mind. That is the fight. We've got to be on one accord. We've got to be on one accord knowing who we're fighting. We are not fighting each other. We're fighting one enemy. Will you say that aloud? We're not fighting each other. We're fighting one enemy. We're not fighting each other. He said you've got to be of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. That will free a lot of you. Don't do anything out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you, I don't have time to get into it, let each of you look out for the interests of others and not the interests of uh, yourself. Verse 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation, took on the form of a bondservant, came in the likeness of God and men, and being found in appearance of men, he humbled himself, became obedient to the death of a cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him, gave him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Why does every name bow to that name? Because he didn't think it robbery. To humble himself and to do a job that could have been beneath him. He could have, come on Donald Viles, he could have called 10,000 angels and caused himself to get off the cross. But Miss Tina, it says he would not come down from the cross because if he would have come down from the cross, my life would not be saved. And my question is, for the people you're called to, why do you think that helping others is beneath you? We live, hear me, this is a pastor part, we live in the Taste Creek area. When's the last time anybody knocked on doors? When is the last time anyone did a prayer walk? When, did, when is the last time anybody had a prayer drive through? Well, we didn't want nothing for anybody. We just want to pray for people, period. When is the last time we were concerned about the interests of anybody other than ourselves and having a good time in here? What about the people who get shot and we hear about it on the news that are right down the street? When is the last time anybody felt concerned about anything other than what I can get? But because he humbled himself, God gave him a name that is above every name, that every time they use the name, demons back up. Because they're like, you don't fool with him. And I'm saying as far as what God is calling for you to do in this season, you've got to be able to humble yourself to the point that when people say your name, they're like, oh, don't, don't. <laughs> now, you can fool a lot of people, but don't fool with them. Because they're credible. <laughs> what that means is what they say they're going to do. So last thing, first thing is you got to, I know y'all got quiet because I, I had to teach that real quick. That's why a lot of people are like, oh Lord, yes Lord. <laughs> you got to be dressed with the mind of Christ and lastly, you got to put on the spirit of Christ. That's why David said, um, renew the right spirit in me. 
My spirit's not always right. I'm finished, Quan. I'm sorry. He said, I'm, I'm not always right, but give me the right spirit. Galatians 5 and 16 says this, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And I want to say that to you as we close here. For those of you who are so scared, I don't, I don't want to fall. I don't want to mess up. If you walk by the Spirit, you won't even gratify the lust of the flesh. Because as you continue to build up your spirit, your fleshly desires are weakened. The Word is like the cross to those devils on those movies they have with the Catholic Church. You know those movies, those horror movies? I don't know why they always do vampires and demons with the Catholic Church. I don't know what that's about. But anyhow, it says every time they try to cast out a demon or something, they always put up the cross. And it always runs away. The Word of God is that kryptonite to your issue. When you get in the word, it's like, oh, don't use that word. Oh, don't use that word. It's like that, it's like that witch on, on the whiz. Don't nobody bring me no bad news. Don't, don't, don't bring me no bad news. You know, you don't need more church. You need more word. You don't need no more Periscope videos and no more YouTube and no more all this stuff you follow and everybody else. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Follow him. Friend him. Follow him and get in his words and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh.